Hi friends, Allie here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make this sunflower square. You can use this square for anything you'd like, like blankets, bags, shirts or sweaters, and so much more. For this square, I used medium four weight yarn and a five millimeter hook to make a five by five inch square, but you can use any yarn weight you'd like. Here's one I did using a light three weight yarn and a four millimeter hook. This one measures four and a half inches and would be great for spring and summer projects, whereas the thicker medium weight square would be best for fall and winter. So feel free to use any yarn you'd like just adjust your hook size accordingly. Don't forget to check out the free written pattern for the sunflower square on my blog or get the printable PDF from Etsy and Ravelry. I'll leave links to those down below. If you're ready to get started, let's head over to our supply list and let's get making. For the sunflower square pattern, you will need medium four weight yarn in three colors, as well as a five millimeter or H hook, scissors, and a yarn needle. Again, feel free to use a different yarn weight if you'd like, just be sure to adjust your hook size accordingly. Starting with color A, we're gonna begin by making a magic circle. So take the tail end of your yarn and wrap it around your pointer finger and your middle finger. When you bring it around for a second time, you're gonna cross it over and bring it to the back of your hand. Take your hook and go under the first strand and pull the second strand under and then secure that with a chain two. There's our magic circle. Now onto round one, we're gonna work 12 double crochets inside the circle. So yarn over, insert your hook into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So there is our first double crochet. We'll work a total of 12 double crochets inside the circle. The chain two at the beginning of the round does not count as a stitch and will not count as a stitch for the remainder of the pattern. So just repeat 12 double crochets inside the circle for round one. Once you've worked 12 double crochets into the circle, you can take the short tail end of your yarn and pull it tight to close up the inside of the circle. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round, so the top of the stitch, and then we're going to chain two. Now we're on to round two, and for round two, we're gonna work one double crochet into the first stitch and then we're gonna front post double crochet around the post of that same stitch we just worked into. So yarn over and insert your hook beside the post of the stitch to the back and back around to the front. Then pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round two. So double crochet at the top of the next stitch and then front post double crochet around the post of that same stitch you just worked into. So we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round two. So I'm just coming to up to the last stitch of the round, so I have one front post double crochet left. So I'm gonna start that as normal but before finishing the final pull through, so the last pull through through the last two loops, I'm going to drop my current color yarn. So I'm gonna drop color A, and I'm going to pick up color B, and I'm gonna finish that final pull through with color B. So I'm gonna be using yellow, and this is gonna be for our petals. So grab your color B yarn, and you're just gonna pull it through the last two loops of that last stitch. And now I'm gonna carry on using my color B yarn. So I'm going to join to the first stitch of the round as normal, but instead of going through both the top loops of that first double crochet, I'm gonna go through only the front loop. So insert your hook into the front loop only of that first double crochet of the round and work a slip stitch. Now we're done with the color A yarn, so you can cut that off. Make sure you leave enough, uh, maybe like four inches or so, so that you can weave in that end. 
but we're all done with color A, so we can cut that off, and now we're just gonna continue on with color B. And now on to round three. For round three, this is where we're gonna be working our petals. So we're looking at the right side of our work right now. So we are gonna be working in these front loops, but we're gonna be turning our work. So chain two and turn your work so that now the wrong side is facing you. And at this angle, we're gonna be working in the back loops only. That's because for round four, we're going to be working in the other loop. So for round three, we're going to be working in the back loop only, starting in that first stitch that's right beside the chain two that we made. So we are going to work one double crochet into the first stitch. And then into that same stitch, we are going to work a triple crochet. So to triple crochet, you're going to yarn over twice insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the next two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. And then into that same stitch again, we're gonna work another double crochet. So there's our first petal. And then you're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. Again, working in the back loop only. So there we have our first petal, and we're just gonna repeat that all the way around for round three. So double crochet into the next stitch. Triple crochet into the same stitch. double crochet into the same stitch again, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And repeat that all the way around for round three. I'm just coming up to the end of round three, so I'm gonna work my last slip stitch into the last stitch of the round. And then we're all done with our color B yarn, so I'm gonna tie off my yarn, leaving about a four inch long tail so that I can weave it in. So here we have our sunflower. Feel free to use this sunflower for an applique or anything like that. But now we're going to add our square around it. So you can also weave in your ends now too if you'd like. I'm just gonna leave mine for now and I'll weave them in at the end. But I'm gonna tie my yellow ends together and that kind of helps keep that last petal down. So I'm just gonna tie those together and then I'm gonna weave these all in at the end. Now we're gonna start the square. So we're gonna join our color C yarn to those loops that we left out from round two. So with our right side facing us, we're gonna join our color C yarn to the back loops from round two. It doesn't matter which one you go into, we're gonna be working in each one around. So just join to any of the back loops from round two. I find it helpful to kind of hold the petals back while you work into those back loops. It kind of pushes them out. So we're gonna chain two and then we're gonna start by making our first corner. So we're gonna work two double crochets into the same stitch that we joined to. Then chain two. Work another two double crochets into that same stitch. So there's our first corner. And now we're gonna work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So 
So there we have our first corner and our first side. So we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So now we're gonna work another corner. So we're gonna work two double crochets into the next stitch. Then chain two and work another two double crochets into that same stitch. So there's our second corner. And then we're going to double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So there we have our second side, and now another corner, two double crochets into the next stitch, chain two, two more double crochets into the same stitch. There's our third corner, and then double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And then you're going to have to repeat that one more time. I'm just coming up to the end of round four. So at the end of the round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet that we worked and then chain two. So here is our first round of our square. You can see it's a little bit hidden from our flower. So we're going to work one more round for our square. So now on to round five. For round five, we're gonna work one double crochet into each of the first two stitches. And then working in the chain two space we made in the last round, we are gonna work two double crochets then chain two and work another two double crochets into that chain two space. Now we're gonna double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. So make sure you don't miss that first one. It could be hidden from the last double crochet that you worked. So we're just gonna double crochet into each of the next nine stitches And then we're coming up to the next corner. So into the next chain two space from the previous round, we're gonna work two double crochets. Chain two and work another two double crochets. And then working down the next side, we're gonna work one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. And we're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So into the next corner space, we're gonna work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and then double crochet into each of the next nine stitches, and then repeat that one more time. So I'm just on the last side of round five. So we're only gonna need to work seven stitches down this side since we've already worked two at the very beginning when we worked that first corner. So on that last side, you only need to work seven stitches across. And then when you get to the end, we're gonna join to the first double crochet with a slip stitch. And then we're gonna tie off our yarn because we're all done our square. If you wanna make your square any larger, feel free to continue on the pattern as it was going. So just double crochet into each stitch around the side and then work a two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into each corner space. 
So now that I'm done my square, I'm going to weave in all of my ends. Once all your ends are weaved in, it should look something like this. Now, if you want, you can either wet block or steam block your square, and that will help fix any tension issues, straighten the edges, and just help shape it into a perfect square. And now you can use this square to make anything you want. I'll be designing a few patterns using this square, so keep an eye out for those. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see what you make with this sunflower square, so be sure to tag me in your photos on Instagram and Facebook. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you're notified as soon as a new tutorial is up. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.